The old saying tells us that familiarity breeds contempt. And maybe contempt is a little bit strong of a word, but sometimes we know something or we know someone or we think we know. We know them so well that we can take them for granted. We can even become dismissive of that person or thing. And sometimes we might think that we've got everything and everyone figured out and we can develop kind of a meh, whatever kind of attitude or even kind of a hostile attitude. But life and the world and situations and institutions and especially other people are not so simple and cut and dried as we might think they are. They're not as predictable as we think they might be. Life and people have a way of surprising us and of short-circuiting our expectations. The people of Jesus' hometown had him all figured out. They knew exactly who he was. You know, this is a little town, Nazareth, that's, you know, probably like Bithlo or something. And not anything wrong with Bithlo. He was the son of Joseph, the carpenter, and his wife, Mary, the lovely woman that lived on the other side of town from us. He had a large extended family. Maybe they remember him as a good and pious and maybe a little unusual young man. But a prophet, a prophet, one who speaks for God, one who teaches the truth, a healer of the sick, the scourge of evil spirits, not, not this guy Jesus that we know. That's not the guy we know from town. And even his, his brethren, his cousins and extended family, couldn't believe that he was this great prophet. And so bad was the doubt about Jesus that Mark tells us that he was prevented from performing any mighty deeds in his hometown. Everyone knew him. They knew him just too well. How well do we know Jesus? Many Catholics, and I'm sure many other Christians, I can only speak for Catholics, but many Catholics might say, oh, you know, we know Jesus very well. We even know his mother. But we, you know, we read the Gospels, we pray, we go to Mass, we receive his body and blood when we go to Mass. I mean, how well can you know somebody? We grew up in Catholic homes, most of us. We had pictures and statues of Jesus, you know, all fair-skinned and blue-eyed and long hair and a beard. You know, like everybody in the Middle East looks like that. <laughs> and we know hymns and songs about him. We celebrate Christmas and Easter. We make the sign of the cross. We know all about him. And nowadays, it's popular to speak about having a personal relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's a good thing. So yes, we do know Jesus. We know him, and that makes all the difference in the world. But it might be the case that we know him too well. It's possible that we might be complacent in our faith complacent in our knowledge of Jesus. Now, I'm not saying that that's, you know, that's true for all of us all the time, but that's always a danger for us. It's always a hazard that we think we've got it all figured out. And I want to suggest that it's best for us that we never think we know Jesus well enough, that we never say, I know who Jesus, I know all about, I know Jesus. All people that we know, in many ways, are a mystery. There are thoughts and feelings and possibilities within those we know and love that we're unaware of. We only know what we see of another person. There's, you know, a whole other person that maybe we haven't seen, maybe hasn't revealed itself yet. There's always something new and surprising in others that we can experience and come to know. 
And that's true for you know parents and siblings, spouses, children, relatives, friends, co-workers. All of these have experiences and personalities and thoughts and feelings and aspects of who they are that are independent of our expectations and that can sometimes go way beyond what we expect of them. And this is especially true of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is not just another human person, which he is, but he's also a fully divine person. So in addition to the mystery of his humanness that we all have, there's that divine mystery. So, you know, we're kind of fooling ourselves, and, and in fact, we're cheating ourselves if we think that we have Jesus all figured out. There are some ways that we come to know Jesus much better all the time. First of all, if we, if we read the New Testament, if we read the Gospels, the Acts of the Apostles, the Epistles, and the book of Revelation, a full picture of Jesus starts to emerge. And if we read the writings of saints and the fathers and mothers of the church, those mystics that had a personal intimate experience of our Lord Jesus, if we study the teachings of the church and we come to see that divine truth that's within all of them, if we come to Mass and we really pay attention to the liturgy and if we pray the liturgy, if we, if we listen to the words that are said and the words that we say, then this picture of Jesus takes on new shades and new colors new meanings. And then bringing it even more closer to home, when we dedicate ourselves to prayer, to spending time in quiet communion and in intimate communion with our Lord Jesus, we become part of that picture. We enter into this relationship with Jesus and we grow closer to him. And then taking another step further, if we strive to imitate Jesus, in our thinking and in our desires and in our way of living and being, then we become even more united to him. We become, in some sense, an image of him. And we come to know him more deeply and more intimately. But we can not even stop there. We have to keep continuing to go on and on. We always need to be surprised or even astonished by our Lord. You know, in the Gospel today, Mark tells us that the crowd was astonished by his teaching. That would be an awesome response to have to our Lord Jesus as we encounter him in the scriptures and in the liturgy and in our personal lives. To be astounded by who he is and what he does. There's an idea or a couple ideas out there that you might hear every once in a while. And, you know, this idea of God of surprises or that God is doing a new thing. And, you know, and God is surprising, and God does do new things. But for some people, that means that the teachings of our Lord that come to us from the Gospels and from the church following Christ throughout the centuries, these things, well, you know, they're open to change. God is a God of surprises, so we can change things. But we need to be careful and even wary of this kind of idea. There are some things, there are some truths that are certain and that are eternal. But at the same time, we can always be ready to experience our Lord Jesus in new and in surprising ways. We can always experience our faith in new and surprising ways. We can always seek to experience Jesus in his church in a new way, in a new surprising way, in a way that can change our lives. So we do well always to keep our minds and our hearts and our lives open to receive our Lord Jesus Christ in new ways all the time. Our every encounter with Jesus, while it's firmly grounded in, in faith and truth and certainty and reliability, can always be like a first encounter with him. 
It can always be the beginning of a new relationship, a new experience of Jesus, in which we come to know him again. In our faith, we often seek comfort. We seek to be comforted. And it's good, and we can always be comforted by our Lord Jesus Christ. But let's never be too comfortable with our ideas about him. Let's not get comfortable with our expectations of our Lord Jesus. Let's always be surprised by our mighty Lord, and the mighty deeds that he does in our lives and in the lives of people we know and love, and the lives of his church, and finally, in the world as it is. Our Lord Jesus is always new, always different, and always surprising if we are open to receive him in that way.